This is string cheese. It says authentic Mexican string cheese. It's a dairy product. You can buy it at a supermarket. It's uh, delicious. Uh, unless, of course, you have a dairy intolerance. But there's also another kind of string cheese. The type of cheese you find on strings, such as guitar strings. They don't have this kind of cheese here. In fact, they don't even have guitars here. That's why I'm going to take you to Guitar Quackery and we're gonna look at some string cheese through the microscope. There's an old Chinese proverb that says, if you have a dairy intolerance, you might wanna consider non-dairy alternatives. So if you clicked on that thumbnail because you saw this was gonna be about string cheese and you happen to have a dairy intolerance, authentic Mexican string cheese might not be for you, which is why I offer this non-dairy alternatives in this episode of Guitar Quackery, which you are now watching. And you should watch till the end because there's something in the second part of this video that, trust me, you don't wanna miss. So I'll come back to Guitar Quackery where I now offer to you a non-dairy string cheese alternative. It isn't every day that we see a guitar with um, string cheese uh, in the, uh, how should I put this, <laughs> amount that we see here. Um, eh, it's a nice guitar. It's an Aria. And um, um, I, I want to show you a few things. Uh, the guitar just came in. Uh, customer just dropped it off. So let's have a quick look first at the guitar. Uh, well, you see the string spacing is not good here. Uh, so that's, you know, we can definitely improve this. You got to make sure you put these uh, bridge pins in, you know, facing this way like this one and that you, uh, you know, space the strings evenly. Uh, now, if we look at the fretboard, I'm going to go slowly here. Yeah, we see some string cheese here. We see some che cheese here. Look at that. Uh-huh. Uh, wow. Okay. Now, uh, that's that. What I want to do now is... Um, well, um, I, I'm going to do a full setup on this guitar, but honestly, I'm not going to be doing this on camera. Uh, this is going to be a short video. I just want to show you all the string cheese that's here, right? So, <laughs> let's do that. This is through the microscope. This is what we see. So this customer uh, told me, well, it's, a, it, it's, a, it's an old customer of mine. She just bought this guitar used and that's how it was, okay? So I don't think there's uh, any of her DNA on this. I think she just bought it. Okay. Look at that. Okay. Now let's hop over to this one. Uh, you can see corrosion around the fret as well. That's also cheese. Now this here is very unusual i don't know how it's holding on to the string but you know here it is we have yeah and then the um on, on the treble side uh, the plain strings are corroded oops and obviously uh this corrosion is um you know rough on the frets 
So that's something that uh, you should be aware of. You know, this is this is why we need to change the strings more frequently. All right. So, like I said, short video today. I'm going to remove these strings, clean the guitar, put new strings on, do a full setup, and that's it. No, that's not it. On the treble side, we have plain strings. So those don't have windings, which means there are no little crevices where string cheese tends to accumulate. But we see another issue with those strings when they get old because they get worn down, um, they get thinner in some places, and sometimes it's so severe that uh, we can't even play the guitar in tune because it throws the intonation off. So let's have a look at that. It's tuned to E. The harmonic should be at the 12th fret, but it's kind of muffled, so it's shifted towards the bridge a little bit. And now if we play the octave, it's flat. Mm. Mm. Sorry, it's just coffee. You know, keeps me up at night editing these videos. Oh, yes. Yeah. So if you want to click the link below that says buy me a coffee, go right ahead. Thank you. Yeah, so you saw there's also an intonation problem on the treble side on the high E string. I have an interesting video about that. Um, it's called, uh, what is it called? Uh, intonation, unidentified intonation phenomenon, which you should watch. That's that. Now, this video is not about how to clean a guitar or how to do a setup. It's, it's about string cheese only. <laughs> uh, but still, I did clean the guitar. I did do a setup. I put obviously new strings on. I just want to show you the outcome. Okay, let me show you where it's at. We'll start, how about here? Okay, so the frets, remember all the cheese, no more cheese, okay? So that might upset some people, but it is what it is. I filed the nut. I even leveled the frets a little bit. Um, obviously adjusted uh, the height of the saddle. And that's it, yeah, plays okay. It's going to be picked up. Well, actually, customer is already on her way. Every used string is going to have some amount of string cheese, you know, stuck between the windings. Usually it's not as uh, severe as we've just seen. Uh, but, you know, so usually you just see a little deposits between the windings. Now, the green color comes from the copper content of this uh, particular string, which is a uh, phosphor bronze. Um, so the winding is um, really a, a brass alloy, which means it has copper in it. So when um, it oxidizes, it turns green, which is what you, know, you see. Um, on another string that I uh, recorded you know, uh, a while back, um, it was a uh, silk and silver string. Um, as you can see, the string is nice and shiny, uh, close to the nut where we don't really touch the string too much. Um, but as we get closer to the uh, playing area of the string, we start seeing some cheese deposits. And in some places, it actually gets, uh, you know, quite severe um like in this place you can see a whole buildup of the string cheese uh obviously this affects the vibration of the string it affects the intonation now uh when strings are old uh usually all of them are going to be old unless the player changed one or two of the strings because because the string broke and they only changed one um so on the treble side you will see um that the strings are corroded and the corrosion is quite abrasive to the frets. So 
a corroded um, plane strength is going to be damaging your frets and wearing your frets down prematurely. But um, if you don't change your strings, you don't have access to your fretboard, which also means you never polish and buff your frets, which is yet another reason why your frets are going to be wearing down uh, faster than they should. So that's that. But now let's look at the mother of all string cheese situations that I've ever seen. Here it comes. String cheese galore. I have the definition here of galore. In large numbers or amounts. Abundant. Plentiful. Well, that is a good definition for what we see here. It's an Ibanez RG550. Uh, here we have the string cheese on the strings. Yeah, we can uh, look at it. There's plenty of it. Uh, I do want to show you some close-ups. We have, you know, the thing for close-ups right here. But before we hop over to the microscope, let's look at it this way. Uh, well, hopefully it's going to focus a little bit better. Uh, this is the condition. All right. Yeah, so these strings have not been changed in a while. And uh, we're going to have a really close look at them. Uh, there you go. So, um, yeah, I think we should zoom in a little bit. Okay. Now, let's just move the guitar in this direction. Okay. Here, you can barely see the strength. Okay. So, we have, uh, yeah, the cheese... So here it's actually quite thick, right? And yeah, let's hop over to this string. Now this string is really interesting because, well, if I show you this string, it's got rust on it, right? And this one has string cheese on it. And if you look at the string, it looks like a plain string. It doesn't even look like a wound string. There's so much cheese on it. But it, it is a wound string, right? Now, let's zoom in a little bit. Let's throw a little more light on it. Yeah. The A string, the E string, low E. So this we see all the time with wound strings. We see cheese uh, kind of, you know, that builds up between the windings. Yeah, I know this is uh, kind of repetitive, but, you know... Uh, it is what I see. It is what it is. Obviously, I'm going to remove those strings, uh, clean the guitar. I'm going to do some fret work on the guitar before I do the setup. All right, go ahead and fire up some comments below. But keep in mind, keep the comments nice. These guitars belong to actual people, my actual customers and they are going to watch this video and read your comments. So this last uh, guitar belongs to a new customer who is actually a very nice guy. Um, he just was not changing his strings uh, often or ever. <laughs> okay, I'm working on his guitar as we speak. Yeah, so just be nice to him. 
uh, in a way, um, we should thank him for bringing this guitar to my shop because that gave me the opportunity to make this uh, video, which uh, obviously you're still watching, which means you like it, which means you should click that thumbs up, subscribe, share this video with your friends, uh, you know, just post it on guitar forums to help out the channel and that's why I make more videos. Uh, like I said, um, string cheese accumulates usually between the windings on the wound strings, but on the treble side, we have plain strings. Those will wear down and they will corrode, which will, you know, wear down your frets. And sometimes it will affect the intonation. And I made a very interesting video about that, which was very popular when I posted it. It's called uh, the unidentified intonation phenomenon, which you should watch. Okay. Until then, thank you very much. Check out the links below. Help me out a little bit. There's a Patreon link. You can buy guitar, Parkway merch. Thank you. And I'll see you soon.